teacher. I am a teacher. But when I tell you I don't believe in the Bible, no. I no longer believe in talking snakes, dragons, unicorns. Yes, unicorns are in the Bible. Well, if you get an old 1828 Noah Webster's Dictionary, which is the very first edition dictionary that Webster came out with about 200 years ago, and if you look up the word unicorn, it says that unicorn is an animal with one horn, the monoceros. This name is often applied to the rhinoceros. Notice how this definition says absolutely nothing about a horse. It says nothing about a horse-like animal or a mythical animal or a fictitious creature. It says absolutely nothing about Greek mythology whatsoever, but rather it says that this is a name that is often applied to the rhinoceros. Wait a minute. What? The rhinoceros? You mean this is a unicorn? But the rhinoceros has two horns. How could this be a unicorn? Well, if you look up the word rhinoceros in the same dictionary, it says that rhinoceros is a genus of quadrupeds of two species, one of which, the unicorn, has a single horn growing almost erect from the nose. This animal, when full grown, is said to be 12 feet in length. There's another species with two horns, the bicornis. They are natives of Asia and of Africa. According to Noah Webster, back in the early 1800s, it was understood that there were two species of the rhinoceros. The one-horned species was called unicorn, and then the two-horned species was called bicornis. So basically, you get a 200-year-old Noah Webster's Dictionary and look up the word unicorn, it says rhinoceros, then look up the word rhinoceros, and it says unicorn. That was just 200 years ago. The Old King James was translated 400 years ago, in 1611. So if the definition of the word unicorn has changed in just the past 200 years from rhinoceros to horse, then it doesn't make much sense to take a modern definition of the word unicorn and apply it to a 400-year-old translation of the Bible. That's illogical. As a matter of fact, even today, the scientific name of the Asian one-horned rhinoceros is Rhinoceros unicornis, and Deuceros bicornis is the scientific name of a two-horned rhinoceros. Well, where do you think those scientific names came from? Hmm, I wonder. Well, they came from the Latin. Unicornis and bicornis are Latin words. Well, that's interesting, because in Psalm 92, verse 10, the psalmist is praying and says, But my horn shalt thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn. If you look up this verse in the Latin Bible, the word that's being used here is the word unicornis. Unicornis is the same Latin word that's being used in the scientific name of the Asian one-horned rhinoceros. In Job 39 verse 9, God is speaking to Job and says, Will the unicorn be willing to serve thee or abide by thy crib? If you look up this verse in the Latin Bible, the word that's being used here is the word rhinoceros. Rhinoceros is the Latin word that's being used in this scripture verse. Interesting. Rhinoceros unicornis. Rhinoceros unicornis. As a matter of fact, in these nine scripture verses, there's actually five different Latin words that are being used. Rhinoceros, rhinocerotis, rhinocerata, unicornium, and unicornis. These five Latin words are what's being used when the old King James version of the Bible says unicorn. Here's a book that was published in 2003 called The Return of the Unicorns, The Natural History and Conservation of the Greater One-Horned Rhinoceros. On the front cover of this book, there's a picture of some rhinoceros. And this book is called The Return of the Unicorns. This book was published in 2003. You can buy it on Amazon.com for 10 bucks. I will not stop teaching what I now believe. Just